Everyone knows Einstein was very smart. He was smart enough that his mind could work faster than a thousand scientists combined. Einstein worked on things that we never even thought of or could understand. He then made those things easier for everyone. Einstein was a physicist who shocked everyone when he released the theory of special relativity, E is equal to MC square 2, and the photoelectric laws. Because of this, he won the Nobel Prize. Because of how well he could think and understand things, many people think that Einstein had a brain that was very different from the brains of normal people. Einstein also knew this, which is why he didn't want his body to be studied after he died. Instead, he had told them to burn his body. The thing Einstein was afraid of did happen, though. Einstein passed away at Princeton Hospital on April 13, 1955. When the doctor came to do the dissection, he stole Einstein's brain without anyone knowing, because he was interested in what was going on in this genius's mind. Dr. Thomas Harvey stole Einstein's brain because he wanted to study it more than he wanted to deal with the effects. When Princeton Hospital learned about it, they fired this person. That being said, Dr. Harvey was able to get Hans Albert to agree to let him study his father's brain and tell everyone about it. That day was the start of a long trip for that brain. Pathologists like Dr. Harvey only knew about what to do after a death, so he thought he would be able to study the brain of this intellectual. And it turned out that Dr. Harvey lost his job at Princeton Hospital and his title as a pathologist. Dr. Harvey took Einstein's brain to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He cut up a bunch of pictures of the brain into 240 smaller pieces. He stored each piece in its own jar and then hid them all in his basement. He got into fights with his wife because of this. His wife used to tell him she would throw this brain outside if he didn't stop. The fights ended up resulting in a split. And with the brain, Dr. Harvey went to Wichita, Kansas, where he started working as a medical supervisor. He tried to learn more about Einstein's mind in his spare time. From then on, he often changed jobs and moved to different places with his brain. Scientists still couldn't figure out what was going on in Einstein's brain after many years. His medical license was taken away instead. And things were so bad for him that he had to get a job at a plastics plant. He made the right choice at the time when he sent different parts of the brain to the world's best neurosurgeon for more study. He did that. In 1985, 30 years after the first time the brain was stolen, a study was written about Einstein's brain. Many neurologists have written many papers about this genius's brain over the next 28 years, which showed that Einstein's brain was very different from the brains of most people. The part of the corpus callosum was the most different. It's important to know that the brain is split into two parts. Any work a person does is first handled in one part of the body, and then the brain sends signals to that part of the body. The left brain controls the body's right side, and the right brain controls the body's left side. And for 90% of people, the left brain is in charge of speaking, thinking, math, and writing. The right brain, on the other hand, is in charge of imagination, understanding shapes, art, and music. Now you may be wondering what the corpus callosum does. Imagine that you have two hands and are typing on a computer or a cell phone at the same time. Type some letters with your left hand and do the same thing with your right hand. As you typed, your left hand made a mistake. You quickly fixed it with your right hand. That means that when your right brain made a mistake, it told your left brain about it so that it could fix it. The place where the two halves of the brain meet is called the corpus callosum. Einstein's corpus callosum was also bigger than most people's, so there was a strong link between his left and right brains. Einstein was able to imagine difficult events and problems because of this. Along with the change in the corpus callosum, Einstein had a very different brain pattern than most people, 
and scientists think that's why there was good cell flow. The fact that his neurons were moving freely shows that he was very good at math. It was possible for Albert Einstein to solve hard math questions in his head without using paper or a pencil. A study paper says that Einstein's brain weighed 1230 grams, which is another reason why it had a lot of neurons. In contrast, it weighs 1400 grams for a normal person. Researchers think that the lining of his brain was pretty thin, which is why it has so many neurons. But the most important question was whether Einstein was born with such a unique brain or if it changed over time. After studying, it was found that when Einstein was born, he did not begin talking until he was five years old. At first, he didn't want to communicate much, and he was constantly lost in his own thoughts. This is in contrast to other children who start talking when they are only two or three years old. He had a diminished capacity for remembering things. Oh, and he has difficulties recalling the simple multiplication table as well. He had no trouble grasping mathematical concepts and didn't feel the need to commit any of them to memory. When he was in school, he struggled in certain subjects but excelled in others, particularly science and mathematics. When Albert Einstein was 12 years old, the math book that his family instructor had given him was left at his residence. It's interesting to note that Einstein grasped the material better after reading that book in just one day. In addition to that, by the time he was 14 years old, he was already an expert in integral and differential calculus. When he raised his hand to pose a question, professors would get concerned since Einstein's queries were often difficult to grasp, even for the instructors. Since he knew so much about math and physics, he caused professors to get nervous. Even when he was a small boy, he had the persistent ambition to summarize all of the laws that govern the universe in a single equation. This became his primary objective in life. When Albert Einstein was only 26 years old, he stunned the scientific community by publishing four separate research publications. As a result of this, he was awarded a PhD as well as the Nobel Prize for his significant contributions to the betterment of humanity. Theses formulated by Einstein are essential to the advancement of scientific knowledge. Many specialists in the medical field and other authorities were of the opinion that Albert Einstein's brain grew in a manner that was distinctive after he was born. The primary reason for this was that if he was unable to discover answers to his inquiries, he would try to figure them out using his brain. The fact that he did this from a young age helped his brain develop in a particular way. The brain of Albert Einstein can currently be found in the collection of the Mutter Museum in the United States. These are carefully preserved on microscope slides to ensure their safety. I hope you enjoyed this video and will share it with others. Leave your thoughts below in the comments section. We'll see you in another cool video.